to end the program. All right, it's now time to welcome in our Sunday guest, one of the great trainers out here at Los Alamitos uh, for quite some time now and a great personality to match it, Denny Egan. Thanks for taking some time tonight. You're welcome, and thanks for having me here. I know that um, your family's been around this area for a long time, but what was it about Los Alamitos that you wanted to apply your talent and your craft here? Well, I got very fortunate about 40 years ago, and I worked for a ranch in Utah. And they sent me here to uh, California to train just their horses. So I came as a private trainer and stayed here with them for about a year and a half. They ran out of horses. They left me here with one horse. So I started here uh, 38 years ago with one horse, and I've been here ever since. And you got to love those stories. The <laughs> one horse to get to this point. I mean, we got all kinds of great horses to talk about, uh, Danny, but... How about, the, would you say Toltac was probably that, that first truly great horse that, that put your name on the map? He was probably the, the really true great one. I had one prior to him that uh, belonged to that ranch that sent me here by the name of Silvertown. And she was a tremendous mare. She ran back in the time, I don't know if you remember, Easy Day, Ivan's Easy Jet, those horses. But she was the first one that really got me going here. And then came Toltac, and he was such an outstanding individual that... Uh, he just made my life a lot easier and uh, gave, made me worry at a young age. Les, what catches your eye about some of these greats for Denny? Well, plenty of uh, great horses you've had in the past. In, in fact, that old runaway, you know, comes to hand there. This is a three times three to win it. But then, as a thrill, the next year, this horse won the champion champions. He did, and uh, Ocean Runaway was such a great horse. And uh, he was a talent, and he was a wonderful individual to be around. And he, uh, he done a lot of things that people don't know about, but he was a tremendous horse. When we, uh, when we got him beat in the Super Derby, he wasn't then eligible for the uh, champion and champion, so we had to find a way to get him here. So we had to run him right back in a Z-Wayne grip. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we were trying to be easy and win the race yeah. and get in the Z-Wayne, and he set a track record that night, you know, in the Z-Wayne grip. And by the way, this is a three-year-old now. This now, is this a three -year -old horse yeah. that time, so this was a super yeah, impressive was, win. Yes. Yeah, it was. And yeah. everybody thought we were silly running him back like we did at the okay. Z-Wayne Griffith, but we did it and got him in the champion champions, and he come back and won the champion champions. So we looked pretty silly going in. We come out looking all right. Well, how about the same year Ocean Road? But a horse who had not so long the same year in 2004 won two big fraternity, no, two big derbies for you. Yeah, now see, that was a great thing. It's like the Derby here tonight. Yeah. When we had Ocean Runaway in 2003, we also had Not For Long. We won the Paterdy and the Derby the same night. Oh, that's right. That yeah. same exact <laughs> night. And uh, that was never done before and, is, and probably won't be done again. You know, with Ocean Runaway, we're going to see the uh, backtrack of the champion of champions in just a bit. But he won three futurities. But when I was looking up his past performances, he wasn't necessarily the early uh, April spring chicken. He, I think he ran eighth in his debut. It took him a few starts. But once June came around and the big money was on the tables, that was when he blossomed. That's true, because when he first started, when he had done his workouts when it was early on, he didn't uh, he didn't really qualify fast. He didn't work really fast, look like things. He did qualify for the kindergarten, mm -hmm. and he come back, and I think he ran fourth then, if I remember. Uh, but uh, he didn't start really blossoming until the year went on, and, and he was a pretty good size horse, and so he caught up with himself and looked better as the time went on. All right, well, let's see the culmination of that career for Ocean Runaway and the champion of champions in 2005. We'll talk over it here and uh, had a great outside post, and uh, what a great performance. It was. I mean, it was just uh, enlightening to watch this horse go ahead and run the way he did and as fast as he did, and then to overcome that Z Wayne Griffith thing and uh, that's the Super Derby and come back and run like this and uh, become another champion by winning this race. It was just unbelievable. What's that feeling like as a trainer when you know you've got the best horse that is the favorite in the biggest race of the year and then the horse delivers? I mean, that's got to be all kinds of feelings at once. It is. It's just It just makes you think that maybe you've done something right, you know, <laughs> along the way, but you have such an outstanding individual. The owners of this horse are such great people, and uh, he was just a delight to have around, and he was so kind when you had him at the barn. You could do anything with him, and he was just happy to oblige you in all the things that you wanted you to do. And how about your trainers? This is the one, most we know, you had the Milan Racing Stable. Mm -hmm. How about the Legacy Reds? I mean, how long have you been with Legacy Reds? So, I'm sure a long, long time, right? Uh, somewhere near between 25 to 30 okay. years yeah. I've been at Legacy, and, and Motor Racing, I've been mm -hmm. with them for going on 14 years now. So, I've been with both of those wonderful, wonderful people for a long time, and we've enjoyed a great relationship over the years. Right, let's go to some lighter side questions here. We've talked about some of your grades. I've got a few more to get to, but i got to ask you, you always got the cowboy hat. Yeah. 
How many cowboy hats and belt buckles would you say you have? Gosh, that's pretty good. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've probably got 40 or 50 belt buckles. You know? Wow. And okay. cowboy hats, probably 10 or 12. Like that. I remember when you donned the cowboy hat at Bedford Holiday Park. You had a nice gray, but it was a silver dragon, if I remember correctly. Exactly. And, uh, and you rolled in there, and uh, that was a nice horse for Brees Blanc that won uh, from off the pace. So you had that one uh, great final win there at Bedford Hollywood Park. Yeah, and I just brought him back here two days ago. So yeah. we, just, uh, we just got him back for uh, Mr. Tobler. He brought a couple other thoroughbreds here. So we've got him and some others going right now.